Welcome to the Auditor of State Uniform Accounting Network screencast for creating, managing, and posting receipts using the Uniform Accounting Network's accounting software. For the purpose of this screencast, we assume that you have your entity's basic vendor, payee, and bank account information already set up in UAN. In this screencast, we will cover how to add receipts of all types as well as how to edit, delete, display, post and print, and print customer copies of receipts. To navigate to receipts, select the accounting module, select the transactions menu option, then select the receipts function. The receipts area will open to the right, listing any batch receipts you have open. Note that posted items can be viewed under the accounting, utilities, receipts utility. The functions available in this area are Add, Edit, Delete, Display, Customer Copy, and Post and Print. The Close button closes the Receipts area. Clicking the Add button provides you the option to add Standard, Memo, and Interest Receipts. Each of these receipt types has many unique characteristics, so you will look at how to add each type of receipt individually. Note that if you choose the wrong type of receipt to begin with, you'll have to close the add form and start over. To add a standard receipt, click the add button and select standard from the drop down menu. UAN will open the add receipt form. The Add Receipt form for a standard receipt is made up of several sections and buttons. They are the Source section, the Date section, the Receipt section, the Distribution section, the Save button, and the Close button. Please note that all green fields are required fields for the receipt. As usual, some green fields will turn white when you click on them. Don't that let this confuse you. The field is still required. To add a standard receipt, you have two options to start with. From the Source drop-down menu, you may begin with selecting the receipt source, or you may enter a brief source name. The drop-down menu will offer you suggestions for any payees already in the system. Next, click on the Purpose text field and type in a brief but informative description of the purpose of the receipt. You have a maximum of 512 characters. Next, enter a bank deposit ticket number for the receipt if you have one. While not required, deposit ticket numbers make tracking deposits on your bank statement and auditing receipts easier. Receipts will be grouped on the bank requisition by deposit ticket number. With the source section complete, we now move to verify the accuracy of the information in the date section. The receipt, deposit, and post dates will be, be followed to today's date. Click on the associated calendar menu and scroll through the calendar to choose the appropriate dates for these required fields, or type in the date in the corresponding field. Note that UEN has several rules for what constitutes valid dates for these fields and which it will enforce. For example, the system will not save a receipt with a receipt date that is more than 30 days before the post date. If you have any difficulties with the dates for your receipt, consult the UAN Accounting Manual. For standard receipts, the Read Only Receipts section displays your receipt type, receipt number, if any, and the current total from the distribution section. Your receipt's total must be greater than zero before you can save the standard receipt. To distribute receipts to the revenue accounts, click on the account code field and select the revenue account from the drop down menu. Or type in part of the account number to search for the suggestions for any payees already in the system. If the account number is similar to an assigned account, UAN will display suggestions for any account numbers and names. Select an account. If the account you want is not available, please consult the UAN Accounting Manual's Revenue Maintenance section. Next, enter the amount of the dis distribution into an amount field. 
Then move the receipt into the distribution's data entry grid by clicking the insert row arrow on the far right hand corner of the grid, or by pressing the enter key. Continue adding any additional revenue accounts by repeating the previous steps, starting with the account code field. If you need to delete any receipt distribution entries, click the X associated with those entries on the far right hand side of the distribution grid. Once you have fully distributed your receipt, review your work to ensure that it is correct. Next, click the Save button in the lower right hand part of the form, or click the Close button to close the form without saving any changes. Note that if you have not saved your work when you click the Close button, UAN will prompt you with a message asking if you want to save your work. Click Yes to save your work and close the form. No to close the form without saving your work, or Cancel to continue working. In this case, we will click Cancel and continue working. When you click the Save button, UAN will save your work, display a message that it has saved your receipt in the lower left-hand part of the screen, and clear the screen to let you add more receipts. Note that your receipt has been saved as a batch job. It has not yet been posted to cash. We're done creating our standard receipt. To review, memo receipts are receipts from which charges are deducted such as tax settlements distributed by the county auditor, or for pass-through revenues from projects like the Ohio Public Works Commission. As a result, there is a little more to adding these receipts than standard receipts. Note that the total of a memo receipt cannot be less than zero. The memo charge cannot exceed the value of the receipt. To add a memo receipt, click the Add button and select Memo from the drop-down menu. UAN will open the Add Receipt form. The Add Receipt form for the memo receipt is made up of several functional sections and buttons. They are the Source section, the Date section, the Receipt section, the Receipt Distribution section, the Memo Charges section, the Save button, and the Close button. Please note that all green fields are required fields for the receipt. As usual, some green fields turn white when you click on them. Don't be confused. The field is still required. You may approach adding a memo receipt in one of three ways. First, you may begin by selecting the receipt source from the source drop-down menu. Second, you may simply click on the source drop-down menu and enter a brief source name for the receipt. UAN will offer suggestions for any sources that are similar to the name you input. Third, you may select the Import Purchase Order button to import purchase order information if a PO has been cut for the charges deducted from this memo receipt. If you opt to use the Import Purchase Order button, the Import Purchase Order form will open. Only the number field is required on this form. The Type drop-down menu may be used to filter the type of purchase order displayed in the Number drop-down menu if necessary. Click on the Number field to select the relevant PO. If the PO information is accurate, click on the checkbox in the upper left-hand part of the Distribution field. Then click on the Import button to move the distribution information to the memo receipt. Note that the detail information will not be moved. If the PO you wanted is not available, Click Cancel to return to the Add Receipt form. Next, click on the Purpose text field and type in a brief but informative description of the purpose of the receipt. You have a maximum of 512 characters. Next, enter a bank deposit number for the receipt if you have one. While not required, deposit ticket numbers make tracking deposits, auditing receipts, and reconciling bank statements much easier. Receipts will be grouped on the bank requisition by deposit ticket number. With the source section complete, we now move to verify the accuracy of the information in the date section. The receipt, deposit, and post dates will be defaulted to today's date. Click on the associated calendar menu and scroll through the calendar to choose the appropriate dates for these required fields, or type in the date in the corresponding field. Note that UEN has several rules 
for what constitutes valid dates for these fields in which it will enforce. For example, the system will not save a receipt with a receipt date that is more than 30 days before the post date. If you have any difficulties with the dates for your receipt, consult the UAN accounting menu. For memo receipts, the read-only receipts section displays your receipt type, receipt number, if any, the current total from the distribution data entry grid, the receipts total, and the charges total. The total of your receipts less your charges must be equal to or greater than zero before you save the memo receipt. To distribute receipts to the revenue accounts, click on the account code field and select the revenue account from the drop-down menu, or type in part of the account number to search for the suggestions for any payees already in the system. If the account number is similar to an assigned account, UAN will display suggestions for any account numbers and names. Select an account. If the account you want is not available, please consult the UAN Accounting Manual's Revenue Maintenance section. Next, enter the amount of the dis distribution into an amount field. Then move the receipt into the distribution's data entry grid by clicking the Insert Row arrow on the far right-hand corner of the grid, or by pressing the Enter key. Continue adding any additional revenue accounts by repeating the previous steps, starting with the account code field. If you need to delete any receipt distribution entries, click the X associated with those entries on the far right-hand side of the distribution grid. If you import purchase orders or blanket certificates into the memo receipt, these PO and BC charges will appear in the memo charges data entry grid. To add additional memo charges, click on the Type field on the Memo Charges data entry line and select the type of charge to be added. If the charge type is a PO or BC, select the associated PO or BC. The account code and account name will automatically be filled out. If you are entering a direct charge, select an appropriate account code for the charge. The account name will be automatically filled out. Note that only certain appropriation accounts may be charged directly. See the UAN Accounting Manual for details. Record your memo charges into the Memo Charges Data Entry Grid by clicking the Insert Row arrow at the far right-hand edge of the grid or by pressing the Enter key. If you need to delete any memo charge entries, click the X associated with those entries on the far right-hand side of the Memo Charges Grid. Once you have fully distributed your receipts and charges, review your work to ensure that it is correct. Remember that the total in the receipts field must be equal to or greater than zero for the memo receipt to be saved. Next, click the Save button in the lower right-hand part of the form or click the Close button to close the form without saving any changes. Note that if you have not saved your work when you click the Close button, UAN will prompt you with a message asking if you want to save your work. Click Yes to save your work and close the form. No to close the form without saving your work, or Cancel to continue working. In this case, we will click Cancel and continue working. When you click the Save button, UN will save your work. Display a message that it has saved your receipt in the lower left-hand part of the screen, and clear the screen to let you add more receipts. Note that your receipt has been saved as a batch job. It has not yet been posted to cash. We're done creating our memo receipt. To add an interest receipt, click the Add button and select Interest from the drop-down menu. UAN will open the Add Receipt form. The Add Receipt form for an interest receipt is made up of several sections and buttons. They are the Source section, the Date section, the Receipt section, the Distribution section, the Save button, and the Close button. Please note that all green fields are required fields for the receipt. As usual, some green fields turn white when you click on them. Don't let this confuse you. The field is still required. You have two options for adding sources to your interest receipt. From the Source drop-down menu, 
you may begin by selecting the receipt source. Or you may enter a brief source name for the receipt. Either way, the drop-down menu will offer you suggestions for any accounts already in the system. Next, click the Purpose Text field and type in a brief informative description of the purpose of the receipt. You have a maximum of 512 characters. Next, enter a deposit ticket number for the receipt if you have one. While not required, deposit ticket numbers make tracking deposits on your bank statement and auditing receipts easier. Receipts will be grouped on the bank requisition by deposit ticket number. Next, you may have the option of selecting between the reinvest or receipt to primary checking radio buttons. These buttons may be grayed out depending on which source you choose. If they are available, you should select whether you want the accumulated interest to be reinvested in the investment account or if the interest should be receded to the primary checking account. With the source section completed, we will now move to verify the accuracy of the information in the dates section. The receipt, deposit, and post dates will default to today's date. Enter any changes to this date by clicking on the associated calendar menu or by typing in the required date. Note that UEN has several rules for what constitutes valid dates for these fields in which it will enforce. For example, you cannot set the receipt date to more than 30 days before the posting date. If you are having difficulties with the dates for your receipt, consult the UAN accounting menu. For interest receipts, the Read Only Receipts section simply displays your receipt type, receipt number, if any, and the current total from the distribution data entry grid. Your receipt total must be greater than zero before you can save the interest receipt. Depending on what source you choose for your interest receipts, UAN will populate the receipt distribution data entry grid with one or more funds. If so, you have several options. First, you may edit the amount of the existing interest distributions by clicking on the amount field associated with each fund and typing in the interest amount. Second, if you have a single interest receipt you wish to distribute proportionally among several existing accounts, click the Distribute Proportionally by Fund Balances checkbox. Note that when you do click on the checkbox, the total field in the receipt section becomes an optional field for you to input the total amount. UN automatically distributes the interest amounts to all of the available accounts proportional to the current fund balances. For more about how this distribution takes place, consult your UN accounting manual. And third, if you want to add additional interest revenue accounts, click on the fund field in the data entry line and select an account for the receipt from the drop-down menu, or enter the fund number into the field. The fund drop-down menu will present a list of suggested options when you do so. Select a fund option. To continue, enter the amount of the distribution into the amount field, then move the receipt into the distribution's data entry grid by clicking the insert row arrow on the far right-hand corner or by pressing the enter key. Continue adding any additional distributions by clicking on the account code drop-down menu and repeating the steps above. If you need to delete any receipt distribution entries, click the X associated with those entries on the far right-hand side of the distribution data entry grid. Note that if the Distribute Proportionally by Fund Balances checkbox is checked, the amount listed in the total field in the receipt section will be redistributed to all the remaining accounts. Once you have fully distributed your receipt, review your work to ensure that it is correct. Next, click the Save button in the lower right-hand part of the form, or click the Close button to close the form without saving your changes. Note that if you have not saved your work when you click the Close button, UEN will prompt you with a message asking if you want to save your work. Click Yes to save your work and close the form. No to close the form without saving your work, or cancel to continue working. In this case, we will click Cancel and continue working. When you click the Save button, UN will save your work, display a message that it has saved your receipt in the lower left-hand part of the screen, and clear the screen to let you add more receipts. Note that while your receipt has been saved, 
It has not yet been posted. We're done creating our interest receipt. To edit receipts, select the receipts you wish to edit by checking the checkboxes to the left of each associated receipt in the Receipts form, and then click the Edit button. You may select any combination of standard, memo, or interest receipts to edit. The Edit Receipt form will open with your existing receipt information. Note that posted receipts will not be displayed here and cannot be edited here. Posted receipts may be viewed for editing at Accounting, Utilities, Receipt Utility. As with adding new receipts, all required fields are displayed in green, optional fields are white, and read-only fields are the same color as the background. Some fields, such as source, may be read-only in edit mode. Okay. To edit a field, click on the appropriate field to add or change an option. You may click directly onto the distribution entries to edit their data. Note that under the distribution data entry grid, you will not be able to edit any automatically populated information such as the account name field. In addition to editing existing fields and distribution entries, you can add information as normal using the data entry lines. If you wish to delete a distribution entry, click on the X associated with that entry. You may scroll between several forms by using the navigation arrows at the bottom left of the screen. The total number of receipts will be displayed in a format similar to the one displayed here. Next, click the Save button in the lower right-hand part of the form, or click the Close button to close the form without saving any changes. But if you have not saved your work when you click the Close button, UN will prompt you with a message asking if you want to save your work. Click Yes to save your work and close the form. No to close the form without saving your work or cancel to continue working. In this case, we will click cancel and continue working. Click the save button in the lower right hand corner of the form. Note that unlike adding receipts, clicking save in the edit mode does not clear the screen. Instead, if you select multiple receipts to edit, it will move you to the next form. We're done editing our receipts. To delete receipts, click on the checkboxes of the batch receipts you want to delete, and then click the Delete button. UN will prompt you asking if you really mean to delete the selected receipts. Click OK to delete those receipts from the system, or Cancel to avoid deleting those receipts. If you click OK, the batch receipts will be removed from the system entirely. Note that the system will not reuse the deleted receipts batch numbers. The deleted batch numbers are permanently used. To display batch receipts in read-only format, click on the checkboxes to the left of the receipts you want to look at, and then click the Display button. The Display Receipt form will appear showing the first of the receipts you selected to display. If you selected multiple receipts to display, you may scroll between them using the navigation arrows at the bottom left of the screen. Note that you may select any combination of standard, memo, or interest receipts to display. Click the Close button when you're finished reviewing the receipts. To print a customer copy of a receipt, click on the checkboxes to the left of the receipts you want to print, and then click the Customer Copy button. Note that printing a customer copy does not post the receipt. UAN will prompt you to confirm that you want to print the receipt, also notifying you that by printing a customer copy, the source, receipt date, and amount sections in the receipt can no longer be changed. Click the OK button to print the selected receipts or cancel to avoid printing the copy. If you click OK, you must print the customer copy. 
Select your choice of printer and click Print to make a copy. Note that the receipt will still be available as a batch receipt in the Receipts area. After printing a customer copy, you may still edit the purpose, deposit ticket, post date, and deposit dates for the receipt using the Edit Receipts function. If you need to print more copies, just use the Customer Copy button again. To post and print receipts, click on the checkboxes to the left of the receipts you want to post, and then click the Post Print button. UAN will prompt you to confirm that you want to post the selected receipts. Click the OK button to post the selected receipts. Once posted, UAN will bring up the print screen and prompt you to print your post to the printer of your choice. You must print the posted receipts. Select your choice of printer and click the Print button to make a copy. After this step, the receipt will no longer be visible from the receipts window, but will be available from the Accounting Utilities Receipt Utility. Once UAN has printed the copy, UAN will prompt you asking if all items printed all right. If everything printed successfully, click Yes. If the receipt did not print properly, click No to open the Receipts Utility for a chance to reprint the receipt. To close the Receipts window, Click the Close button. The key points you will want to remember for managing receipts are 1. Be sure to fill out or at least verify all the green required fields. 2. When in the Add Receipt form, the Save button will clear the screen after saving your information so that you can add more receipts of the selected type. 3. Be sure to keep an eye on the dates field of any type of receipt you are entering. These dates need to be accurate and reflect the UAN rules for managing receipts. If they do not follow these rules, you may have difficulty saving these receipts. Consult your UAN accounting manual for the rules. 4. Memo receipt charges cannot be more than the value of the memo receipts. 5. When adding an interest receipt, Ensure that you select the correct radio button to reinvest the receipt or to move the interest receipt to your primary checking account. 6. You may find posted receipts at Accounting, Utilities, Receipt Utility. Thank you for using this UAN screencast on creating and posting receipts in UAN. For further information, you may contact the UAN support line at 1-800-833-833. 8261, or by email at uan underscore support at auditor.state.oh.us.